Hi, I'm the Jason of All Trades. This video is part of a long-term review series I'm producing on the Singer Heavy Duty Sewing Machines. I'm evaluating the performance of the machine, testing its capabilities, and possibly forming an opinion on its longevity. I purchased this machine myself, and my opinions are based solely on my experience with this single machine. I've heard from many over the years who love their Singer Heavy Duty machines and many others who have had bad experiences. Caveat mTOR. During this series, I will try sewing various things with the machine with an emphasis on the heavier fabrics and complicated assemblies I tend to prefer. I will also compare the machine to some of my vintage sewing machines and even my portable and industrial walking foot machines. Is the Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine the best sewing machine ever made for sewing heavier materials? Or is it a total waste of money to be avoided? Time and testing will hopefully reveal an answer, but I suspect it will be somewhere in between. Follow along with this series, and together we will learn more about what this machine can and can't do. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when I release new videos in this series. And now on to the video. Hello sewing people of the internet. In the continuing testing and evaluation series on the Singer Heavy Duty Machine, today I want to talk about a subject that I get questions about a lot, both for this machine and just sewing machines in general, and that is, will it sew leather? I've been saying the same thing to a lot of people for many years now about sewing leather. My response is pretty much always, any sewing machine will sew leather, what do you mean by leather? So I recently picked up a grab bag of different leathers from a leather crafter at a flea market. So this is leather. And I don't know how well I'm going to really get it to show the detail here. But this is extremely thin. I don't have anything to, to measure the thickness with. But, I mean, this is like cloth. So yeah, any sewing machine can sew this, no problem. From the same leather worker, I bought this piece of hide. This is a quarter inch thick. It's actually a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch. Uh, no, no, you're not going to sew this with really probably any sewing machine that's not a dedicated full on leather sewing machine. So somewhere between those extremes are, you know, different thicknesses of leather that you might want to use to make a pocket or a pouch where you're going to sew one layer of the leather to, say, cordura or canvas or something. Uh, or you may want to make a wallet, a real simple wallet with two or three layers. And depending on the machine and the leather, that's something that you can certainly do. Uh, I don't want to give the impression that I know a lot about leather. I worked at a company that made leather bags for a while, but I was strictly a sewing machine operator and you know, I learned a little bit about it, uh, about leather in general working there, but uh, I'm certainly not a leather worker. But uh, to my understanding, leather basically comes in two forms, vegetable tanned or veg tanned and chrome tanned. And if I understand this correctly, chrome tanned tends to be softer and, and probably easier to sew and veg tan retains more of its structure and would therefore be more difficult to sew. If you're thinking about making gun holsters and saddles and stuff, then you're probably looking more at uh, veg tan. If you want to upholster a couch, then you'll probably be using a you know chrome tan split hide or something. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of, of why the question, does this sew leather, is a difficult one to answer accurately. So today I'm going to do some demonstrations on the Singer Heavy Duty with a couple of varying thicknesses and different tannings of leather just to kind of see how well it does it. I've already done a couple of samples with a leather needle in the machine sewing realistic things. It, it works as well as any other sewing machine should work. So let's see how it goes. By the way, someone is going to mention in the comments that uh, you can make modifications to machines to make them work better for sewing leather. That's probably 100% true, but I'm addressing what a standard sewing machine can do. And again, one of the issues I have with the Singer Heavy Duty is that the fact that it says Heavy Duty on it makes some uninformed people believe that this is the machine to buy to sew this with. And it's certainly not. 
So we're, we're dealing with the machine in its stock configuration. Again, I've put a leather needle in it. It's a size 90 needle. Uh, I do have a Teflon foot that came with this package. It's one of the reasons I selected this particular package is it came with the Teflon foot. Uh, I haven't needed it yet in some of the samples I've done, but we'll try it. I also have the walking foot. I've already done a video about these. I don't expect it to be helpful at all, but if for some reason I decide to try it, then we'll see how it does, but I'm not planning on it. So for the first demonstration, this is some random Walmart polyester. Uh, just kind of something you might make a little bag or pouch out of and a little piece of leather that's about an eighth of an inch thick. I think this is veg tan, but it's pretty soft. So, and I'm just going to sew it on as if it were like a patch with your, you know, name stamped on it or whatever for your, your brand. I pulled the uh, tails from the front to the back side, and uh, if I were actually making something here, I would tie those off. I'm not going to bother right now, but but as you can see, that did fine. Uh, other than the the last stitch here that I extended to put it in the same hole as I started, the stitch length seems pretty consistent. I don't see anything offensive. Good tension. I've had the tension maxed out on this machine pretty much since I've had it. And it's so far been working okay, but it's totally maxed out. So this is one example of sewing leather that is completely approachable. If, if you make a you know bag out of some kind of textile and you want to put a leather patch on it, no problem with this machine. All right, so now we're going to level it up a little bit. This is the same thickness of leather but I'm going to do two layers, so I'm simulating maybe making a simple card holder. Um, I probably forgot to mention this earlier, but I'm, as always, using V69 thread. Uh, it's V69 bonded nylon thread. So this is two layers now. So as it got down to where the fold is and it got thicker and uh, created more resistance, the stitch length went pretty wonky here. So I'm going to put the Teflon foot to do the other side and see if that makes any difference. So that made no appreciable difference whatsoever. So this is an admittedly unfair comparison, and I was planning on waiting to do this until later in the series, but I think this is a good opportunity to illustrate a point I've made a number of times. So this is my Sarite LS1. This doesn't have the worker bee motor on it right now. It's got the standard motor still. Uh, I'm not going to bother putting thread on it. There's enough thread left over from whatever I cut off the last time. So let's see how this does. And I don't have a leather needle in this machine right now, but it shouldn't matter. So it turns out that needle wasn't threaded. I wasn't paying attention. But uh, even without thread, you can see that the stitch length remained consistent. It turned a little here because I wasn't guiding it carefully. But And the point of this is that with a walking foot machine, it is able to overcome that increase in thickness 
in a way that I don't think any non-walking foot or drop feed machine is going to be able to do. So my, my usual response to people who want to sew leather, ask about sewing leather, is ultimately you're going to want a walking foot machine, even if, if you're not needing a real leather machine that's you know, totally dedicated to sewing really thick leather, you're probably still going to want a walking foot machine, and this is why. So this is some more veg tan, about one eighth of an inch thick. Uh, that, I don't know, maybe two millimeters, something like that, if you're metric. Um, so since there's not a fold here, I'm just going to sew these two pieces together and see if that gives this machine a better chance of keeping a consistent stitch length. We'll go ahead and keep the Teflon foot on now just to see how it works. I am honestly impressed that I can go stitch by stitch and it has enough penetrating power even without having momentum. Uh, a long time ago I did a video of sewing leather on my Singer Featherweight and I had to really get the hand wheel started before it could actually sew, but this will go from a, well, okay, I spoke too soon. With the, with the needle stopped against the leather it was having a hard time, but it's, it's performing well. I wasn't trying to make this, but this is the kind of leather you might make something like a sheath for scissors or something. It's not real firm, but um, it would be fine like as a storage sheath, you know, or sleeve to go over something. Um, and yeah, I mean, it sewed it fine. What do you think? Should I sell these? Just out of curiosity, I'm going to try some of this really thin leather two layers, and I'm going to see if it'll do a decent zigzag stitch on it. Yeah, pretty great. I feel like I'm going to regret this, but I also feel like if I don't at least try, someone will ask about it. So this is that really thick piece of hide. Uh, I'm just gonna, let's see, go to straight stitch. Um, yeah, it barely goes under the foot. Just one layer. Let's see if I can even penetrate it. Yeah, okay. So, okay. So we can sew it. I don't know what the point of it would be. There's no way I would try two layers. It's just not going to sew two layers. Um, I guess if you wanted to put stitches for decoration, maybe, maybe you could sew this to something. But man, that would, I mean, that's just not what you would use this for anyway. So, like the fact that it managed to get through it is kind of impressive, honestly. But I wouldn't want to do that for too long. This brings up a point I've made in the past. It's probably worth repeating. Often on ads on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and places like that, you will see uh, sellers advertising that the sewing machine can sew leather and maybe it'll have a piece of leather with some stitches in it like this. That doesn't mean that it's the right machine to do this. You know, Obviously, just about any sewing machine is capable of putting holes in leather and running thread through it. Doesn't mean that that's good for the machine or it's going to make an effective stitch or so and I, for those of you who like do leather work yeah you would skive this down make it make it thinner at the edges to sew it uh, there's all kinds of ways you could make this more doable my argument is if you're going to that trouble you shouldn't be using a machine like this or any other 
domestic machine or non-walking foot machine. Like if you were really doing leather work, have a, an appropriate machine for that. You wouldn't skive it with a sharpened butter knife unless you had absolutely no other choice. So. But anyway, I just wanted to make that point again that random sewing machine on Craigslist or whatever we're using these days, Kijiji, uh, just because it can sew a little bit of leather doesn't mean that that's the machine you're looking for if you are a budding leather worker. Okay, this, so to conclude, if you are considering this sewing machine and some of your aspirations involve sewing reasonable pieces of leather in reasonable thicknesses or layers, adding a leather patch to your canvas bag or making a little card holder or something, I would say, based on this little, this is all the experience I've had, you've seen all of it except for maybe four inches of sewing before I started the video. Uh, I would say this sews leather at least as well as I would expect a machine like this to do it. And I think for occasional use of the sort we talked about, this would be fine. If you're doing miscellaneous stuff and occasionally leather is part of it, should be no problem. Uh, I didn't notice in the things that I did, I didn't notice that the Teflon foot was particularly helpful. I probably would in you know circumstances that I just didn't try today. Uh, you know, it came with my machine, so I'm glad I have it, but it didn't seem to help in the one time that uh, I thought it might, but that's fine. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. If you have questions or comments, post them in the comment section below. If you like what I'm doing, clicking like is always a nice thing to do. If you're not a subscriber, I would love it if you consider subscribing to my channel. There's a bunch of links in the description that you can check out, including a link to my other channel, which has nothing at all to do with sewing. Uh, for those of you who were hoping Bobbin would make an appearance, he is asleep right here and has been the entire time I've been filming. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. He's working hard.